Our nerves are wrecked at the end of that. Another 1-0 win for Manchester United. 1-0 winners away at Leicester. Another game where Manchester United in the second half, we, 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 we sat back. We tried to soak it up. And it's another game where we soaked it up. That second half, a bit like the majority of the game against Southampton, we didn't really control it. We were under the cosh, under a little bit of pressure. Leicester were, Leicester were naff, all right? Leicester were crap. They're bottom of the league. They're bottom of the league for a reason. But if there's one photo to sum up that performance there for Manchester United, it's that. Diogo Delo there, for me, man of the match. Varane and Martinez, both imperious, I feel, again. But Delo stepped up. Delo, I think, has kind of been going under the radar for the last few games. But that there was our third win in a row. Beating Liverpool, going to a clean sheet with a 1-0 win away at Southampton. And a clean sheet and a 1-0 way, a win at Leicester. What a turnaround that is from those first two performances where we looked lifeless, spineless, gutless. Everything that you would associate with the Manchester United team over the last few years. Let's be completely honest. And we are just seeing the polar opposite. Martinez and Varane, man. I never want to see Maguire and Lindelof again as a centre-back partnership. They're building on it, game, in, game on game. And in that first half, I know I talk about the lack of control in that game. The foot, the, you know, that was in the second half. The first half, like one of the most controlled, performance, controlled team performances I've seen from United. It really, really was. Jaden Sancho, of course, came up with a moment of magic. And that's what's happened in these last two games. One moment of magic has defined a game. And the defence has just defended it for its life. It was Bruno Fernandes in the game against Southampton. It was Jadon Sancho tonight. Brilliant goal. Diogo Delo massively involved in that. Winning the ball back. Playing it through, I think, to Bruno, to Rashford, to Sancho. Boof, moment of quality. Fantastic. And there was some football in that first half. We were playing it out from the back. I tell you what. We're getting more confident at doing that as a team. There was one, in, one bit in particular, which I'd love to see the highlight of. Like five, six, seven, first time passes. I was like, okay. There's evidence of those drills getting into the player's mindset, the confidence getting into their feet to start playing it first time. Again, Martinez was Martinez. I mean, man of the match, sorry, man of the match in the last two games. For me tonight, I mean, can we just have a little pause here and say, Jermaine Genius, man, you got to stick to the one show. What that guy was waffling for a majority of the game, I have absolutely no idea. But it wasn't Christian Eriksen who was man of the match. For me, it was Diogo Delo. And we'll speak about Christian Eriksen in a bit. But Martinez again. Just mustard, just calm. You can tell he's got, he's got that dog in him. He's got that dog in him. And I'll tell you who else played really well. Kind of looks like he's staring into my soul here. Zooming in on that picture, Scott McTominay, right? We, he's, he's very, very fashionable to slate Scott McTominay. In that first half, I thought in and out of possession, I thought he had a good game. Out of possession against Southampton, he left a lot to be desired. I wouldn't say he's the most incredible in possession today, but he, he did a job in that first half. Everybody did a job. It was a very balanced team performance in that first half. In the second half, it kind of, I wouldn't say unraveled, but Leicester, we allowed Leicester to get back into the game. They had a sustained period of pressure for about 10 to 15 minutes where you were like, well, a bit nervous now, a little bit nervous. We kept giving away stupid fouls, whether it was Tyrell Malisea, whether it was Diogo Delo, whether it was... I don't know who else was giving it away. Silly fouls. It was just dumb fouls. Really dumb fouls. Right on the edge of the box. On the outside of the edge of the box. I thought they were going to punish us a bit more than they did. But we... we I wouldn't say we got away with it. Over the course of the 90 minutes, I think we deserved that. We deserved that win. But we should have killed the game in the first half. But this is a team, a team that is very much in a process. We know that right now. It, now we, we've seen it in the last two games. We've done something that I don't really remember us doing as much in the last few years, and that's seeing out a 1-0 win. Two clean sheets in a row, where only one goal... Yeah, it's not difficult. Matt isn't difficult. You score one goal, if you keep a clean sheet, that's all you need to do. But typically, this United team have just let you down in those situations. But I've got to speak about some individuals there, because I think performances left a lot to be desired overall. And the first person I'm probably going to speak about is Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford there, surviving towards the end. Jaden Sancho coming off. Presumably, that was because... Rashford's fitter than, than Sancho and, and he wanted to use his legs and his running towards the end there. I don't particularly know why because he wasn't for the performance. That's for sure. Rashford's first touch was dog. Absolutely abysmal tonight. Every time the ball was fired into him, that's what you need to be as a number nine, to have that first touch to bring everyone else back. No, Rashford was just poor tonight. Got the assist for the Sancho goal. Fantastic. But Rashford needs to offer more in that position if he's going to play there. Of course, this man came on. And if we're talking about control, I think we saw it from when he came on. I'm zooming in on that beautiful Brazilian bastard. Let me bring that up there. Yeah, hell yeah. 
slow that game down. Hands out. Slow that game down. You saw it quite a few times, actually. Every time he had the ball, when it, as soon as he came on the pitch, I felt more composed. I'm, I'm not sure if you had the same reaction, and I hope the players had the same reaction. After that 10-minute period where Leicester sort of had a bit of pressure and they couldn't turn that into a, a goal, United kind of got a little bit more control back, and it was because of that, man. Him in the middle there is going to... I can't... He has to start against Arsenal. Christian Eriksen, by the way, I don't know how he's going to play against Arsenal. Another 90 minutes there. Was it 90 minutes he played against Southampton. I think he played 90 minutes every game so far. And this is a man who did not expect to come and do that. And this is... Fitness is outrageously good. I don't really expect to see him on the starting 11 now. The game against Arsenal, which would be a shame. But Casemiro there, adding that sort of arm that you would want to see. And there was one moment in that second half, at one moment... About a 90-second period where we just knocked it around. Asimiro, Eriksen, back, Malasia, Varane. Knocked it about and had possession for about two minutes. It's that sort of game management. We've just, we just haven't been able to do. Because the players have always played hot potato at United. They're scared to have possession. He's not. He wants the ball at his feet. Big difference, I think, he made. Now, Tyrell Malasia and Diogo Delo. I thought they played well tonight. I think Diogo Delo outshone him completely. I think in these last few games, I think it's kind of gone under the radar because of how good that man has been. Because of, because of how good Veranda Martinez has been, we haven't really had a conversation about Diogo Delo, but tonight he's in the spotlight and deservedly so. Got the assist for Bruno against Southampton. Was it, took the ball down from that, that, chance, that clearance from Leicester tonight that created the chance for the Sancho goal. And defensively, very sound. And that chest pump there, celebrating a, a, a bit of defending like it's a goal. It might, again, it might seem cliche, but shit, this United team needs to do that. They need to appreciate that is so significant and important in football, and they should be celebrating that. And they were, and they deserve to do that. So I put it down there, we fight and we win. That was a proper bit of team spirit we've seen in these last couple of games. A bit of team unity, like they actually really all want to see that goal, that game out, to see that 1-0 win. And they're all part of that collective. And it makes a big difference, it does. Ten Hag is building something here, man. He's building this unit. Now, Ronaldo came on and he needed to come on because Rashford was non-existent, but Sancho went off. Had a couple of decent touches. <laughs> Would have been pure Ronaldo if that overhead kick had gone in, wouldn't it? Absolutely pure Ronaldo. It didn't. So, I don't think we're going to see Ronaldo start too many games for Manchester United in the Premier League this season. He's just too jarring a presence when it comes to that style. But when it comes to... get, I mean, It's weird to say that about the most, the most prolific goal scorer of all time, but it's just, it is what it is. We're playing an extremely intense style of football. Although saying that, I would say Manchester United didn't play the high press too much today. I think we played the high press whenever there was a defensive mistake from Leicester, we pounced on it. We pressed. Whenever they were out of shape, we pressed. But we didn't just necessarily press the whole time when they were in defence. We sort of sat back and waited for them to make a mistake and then we pounced. It was a different type of press. But if only we have a player who can come into this team and add creativity into it. If only, oh no, yeah, we've actually just gone and signed him. Anthony Langer there tonight was Anthony Langer, like he was against Southampton, like he was against Liverpool. He doesn't have the creativity to change enough on that right flank. And having Anthony in there is going to be such a difference, an absolute difference maker. Somebody who could skip past a player can actually create chances by himself rather than waiting just for the overlap. We need that in this team because as much possession as we had in that first half, we didn't create enough, anywhere near enough. Rashford had a poor game. Sancho was, well, he scored the goal. Not to say anything against Sancho. A lot to be desired from that front three overall in that whole game. And Anthony comes in and adds a new spark into that. And I tell you what, add that spark of Anthony into this spark of what we're seeing and defending into what I would say, I'll be honest, a very decent performance from Martinez, a very decent performance, I think, from McTominay. Casemiro coming off the bench. Positives, positives, three wins on the trot, three wins on the trot, two clean sheets. Yes, please. Arsenal won five in a row. We've won three in a row. It's going to be a cracking game at Old Trafford on Sunday. And I tell you what, it, I hope that's the last time when Manchester United have a full game of 90 minutes and we look at it and go, we're just lacking creativity. That's why we spent 85. What well, you're seeing it right there in the last couple of games is exactly why we signed Anthony. I can't wait to get him straight in that starting 11, but I've got a big smile on my face. Two nervy games, tetchy games, because United of old, last few years, they normally collapse. But this team, they've got that bit of dog in them. And it's paying off. Two 1 0 wins, two clean sheets, fighting spirits, something new. Bring on Arsenal, man. Bring on Arsenal. <laughs>